So in Lisbon, we basically, we are now tendering, we are going to tender in this semester, the next sub, the next uh, urban mobility plan. But we actually had our first one on 2005. So it was the first time where, that, where we actually, we, we made a complete study where it was more focused on the diagnosis, the idea of a sump was not yet set, but was our first work to develop a, um, a document regarding the strategy for mobility. Afterwards, what happened is that uh, we did several decisions, key, key decisions for the city. For instance, this idea that we have to return the space for the people, transform the city space, priority to pedestrians, the cycle paths, but this, the decision also to be part and to have be you know, the owner of the public transport company, to actually have a, a stronger investment in the public transport com company. But what we are lacking now, we did very different uh, studies for different um, uh, areas of the mobility of the city, but now we are lacking an umbrella that, that fits everything together. We did very recently with the Boston Consulting Group a study regarding the strategy for mobility and, um, so, and the vision. So we do have a vision to be a, a reference for Europe in the change that we want to, to, to improve in the city of Lisbon. We know that we don't have the best indicators, but we want to change fast. We, we, want, we want to come from 50% model split to the car to 33% in a short time, till 2030. And so this, this means, you know, aggressive changes in the way that the city is organized in a more sustainable way. Um, and for that we believe that it's important this next generation SEMP. What we call a next generation SEMP, and we call it the first generation SEMP, being the first the one we did, the second the, the framework that the European Commission gives to the SEMPs, the third what we want to do, it's more a dynamic tool. It's actually something that we can use it as a digital platform where we put the actions we want to do, the indicators that we want to achieve and monitor also like an observatory and be a life tool and not exactly a document. Also, the, one of the key things that we want to achieve with this next generation SEMP is actually the engagement of the stakeholders. I think that's the main role, the main thing that we can bring from the new part that we can bring to the SEMP, because usually uh, the studies are very, you know, made by, by the technical teams and, and they are, are in-house or a consultant does it. But what we want here is actually a broader commitment in the city for the different stakeholders, the big companies, the small companies, the, the, the associations, um, and to give a, a different, a different uh, equation to, to, the, to, the, to the action plan. One of the keystones is urban logistics. Urban logistics is part of the, of the, um, of the challenge for mobility. People, people and politicians always all usually focus a lot on mobility for people, but urban logistics is one of the key issues for, for the quality of the mobility in our cities in the next 10 years. So one of the cornerstones will be also urban logistics. Uh, regarding the parking policy for the city of Lisbon, uh, we have, we, there, there, is, there is being a, a shift. We have the intention that Almost all, all the city will be covered with the on-street regulated uh, parking. Uh, it's a huge discussion in the city, sometimes, uh, let me put it this way, aggressive discussion also with the people because we believe that basically when we have a street full of cars, we believe that the parking should be regulated. And, uh, and so the parking company, which is a 100% municipal, is enlarging its area of activity. And when it does, people, the first reaction of residents, it's they are very upset about it. But what's interesting is that after two or three months, they're actually very happy because what happens is that we are removing those cars that spend all the day without paying anything on the street and those parks have to go for, for proper infrastructure that it's prepared for them, what we call um, the, the parks that we have for park and ride, so in, in, in the outskirts of the city. So we have space for those cars, but the Portuguese people really love to bring the car as, as far as possible inside the city without paying. And while we are doing this, we are increasing the regulating public space, what we get is more space for residents. And um, so this is actually quite important for us, to, to for the parking space for residents, for two reasons. First of all, if we don't give them space today, they already have the capital cost of the car. So, so if you don't give them parking today, what they'll do, is they'll stop on top of the sidewalks, and that's bad for everyone. And probably they'll take the car in the next day, day after because it's badly parked and they cannot use another thing because they know if they use their car, 
they don't use their car, they will be fine. So if you get the better conditions for residents to park, while people don't make the decision to have less cars inside the city because that's a transition phase, we have a better probability that they actually use the other modes if they can actually park their car in, in their houses and then in, in their, in, around their house. That's why regarding parking, that's our strategy to, to, to increase the, to the conditions that residents have to park their cars in their houses in a way that they don't need to use the car in the day after. So we are also pushing some pilot projects where actually for we also know that in the historical part of the city of Lisbon, people don't use their car, their car because if they take the car from the parking, it's very hard to park again. So if they don't use the car, why do they have it? And so we are trying to change. We are we are going to allow them to park the car far away in the public park, but we give we give them a, a monthly transport pass in return, and with that we freeze public space and we test the idea. So these are the kind of concepts that we are pushing, and also the finally. We are increasing the value, the value for parking, for rotation, for vi visitors, because today it's cheaper to park than to go for public, than going by public transport. That doesn't make any sense. So price will go up in a way that costs more than public transport. So the neighborhood program that we have, it's actually a, a, a project where we want to increase the quality of public space in the neighborhoods. We want all the neighborhoods to have a plaza and so we take space from cars and from parking to create that, that plazas and it's a place where the kids can play, where people can get together, um, you can just be in the sun reading a, reading a book and what's uh, quite interesting, it's when you create these spaces, people actually fill those spaces so sometimes there was a discussion, so why are you doing that, no one is going there, no, people always go there so people need those spaces, they are looking for those places. Um, and so we, are, we have a strategy to that every neighborhood in the city has this, let's call facility, but it's actually a plaza. And also what is very important is when you improve the sidewalks, when you improve the cycling conditions, uh, you also see a shift in the, in the life of the neighborhood. The, 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 the commerce, the local commerce, you see now even those big shops that usually you are going to the shopping malls, they are now opening local shops where people actually walk or cycle to that shop. And that's also a different way of living in the city and all of that brings an interesting reduction on the use of the car. And it's actually quite impressive that in our last mobility survey, the car finally stopped growing in the city of Lisbon, but we had a huge impact on the walking that doubled from 18% to 32, 46%. 46%. And we associate that, the surveys have six years between them, we associate that to this shift of the facilities that we have for walking in the city. Another strategy that we have in the city of Lisbon, and you know, the people speak about the light of the, of the, the city of Lisbon, the riverfront, the, the proximity to the river. The issue is that we didn't have a proximity to the river because the, the river actually was formerly from the harbour. And so it was for industrial activity, for economical activity. And so there was a disconnection between the city and the river. And that changed with the mayor Antonio Costa and it's keep changing with the mayor Fernando Medina. Uh, we did uh, very positive agreements with the harbour and so all the areas that are not use, used for, for the shipping activity have been uh, delivered to the city for the city to manage. And with that we improve a lot of the quality of the public space, we create cycle paths, we create um, walking paths, uh, we, improve, we, get, we improve the gardens and so today you can actually uh, use the, the riverfront to relax, to 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 walk, uh, and you know you go in the weekend, you go there, and it's full of people. So it's Lisbon always had a strong proximity with the water, and now that proximity it's closer. The biggest challenge that we have is what's the future of mobility? So uh, we, we have a very, a very strong policy and we strongly believe that the public transport is the backbone of the, of the mobility system because only the public transport has the density to transport a lot of people in an organized way that makes the best of the public space. But we know that mobility is shifting. The connected car, the autonomous car, the shared modes, the scooters, the e-scooters, the, the, the cars, the bicycles. And I strongly believe that there is a new role for cities that is to be mobility managers. 
and in the past cities were basically infrastructure ma managers and I think we have to do more. And to do more we need a common language between cities, OEMs, mobility operators um, and some basis of regulations that are more or less the same and data protocols to so data exchange protocols, things like that. And this is a huge shift that many cities are not ready even and at the at the human uh, human resources level, so it, this means new new capabilities. We have to capacitate our teams to do so. We have to change our organization, and I strongly believe that this is going to be the challenge for the next ten years, both for cities but also for the industry. We are very proud to receive the Mobility Week Prize because it's not about the Mobility Week; it's about what we do all the years and the past years. It's a recognition of the change that we have been doing in Lisbon and it's not the only one because this recognition comes after the green capital that we are going to be in 2020, the Velo City Conference that we will host in 2021. So there is a lot of people recognizing what we are doing, so this says that we are doing something right. I usually say that Lisbon is not the best city in the world or even in Europe regarding mobility, but for sure we are not one of the ones that wants to change fast, faster. It, it's not about the speed, it's about the acceleration, if you want to. And we strongly believe that revolution is needed in mobility. If we don't change very fast um, the way that people move in the city, we won't achieve the Paris Agreement targets, we won't achieve the UN Development Goals, we won't achieve the White Paper Goals for transport in the UA EU. All those goals are for 2030 and 2030 is tomorrow. So we need action, we need investment, we need a shift, we need, we need a change of behaviours. And to be honest, that's all about the kids, because the kids that are now 10, 12 are going to be the adults in 2030. And so that's our ambition, to be recognized for the, for the quick change that we are doing in our city. Usually the, the media, sometimes, the, you know, you have two kinds of media. The media that is willing to discuss strategy, long-term strategy, and you have the daily basis news. And the daily basis news, it's like, like the feelings of people, it's are immediate and, and don't care too much about tomorrow. And when you change a neighborhood and you cut the, the crossing traffic and, and you change the roads, people say, oh, now it's harder to access my neighborhood. And so the news is, it's harder to access the neighborhood. No one brings the news two months afterwards to say, oh, no, the, the neighborhood now is quieter. So usually the bad news comes faster than the good news. And so we have to live with it. Also, at the political level, there is also a bit of difference between the more progressive, progr pro 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 progressist um, policy that we have, a left-wing policy, and sometimes the right-wing say, oh, oh you, what about the car, blah, blah, blah. And you see the same in the other cities. Uh, we strongly believe that the car also has a role in the city, but we are sure that we, we have to have less cars in the city than we have today. And so... This is, this is part of the, the, the political dance that we have. The good thing about democracy is that you got to vote every four years. And if people like this policy, they keep voting. And, and that's our ambition. I think what I'm proud of, it's the, it's the behavior that people that are managing the mobility in the city of Lisbon, the feeling that they have today. They feel that their job is important. They feel that their job is changing the quality of life in the city of Lisbon. Uh, they know that they can work together, I mean the, the public transport company, the parking company, the city, the city officers, the municipal police officers. So we have a team of people that are very keen in improving the mobility of the city of Lisbon and that's I, I think uh, what I want to do, to have a big team of people improve the quality of life of the people that live and use the city of Lisbon. My message for other cities is that we need, we need action, we need to act now. I know that the context in cities is different, we don't all have the same resources, but there are small things that you can do, there are bigger things that you can do, but if cities don't change their quality of life, if they are not more sustainable, we will fail as society for the next generations to have a better quality of life. The change starts in cities and every city can do something about it.